The CDC estimated the rates of infections after each needle stick injury. Hepatitis B, 6 to 30%, hepatitis C, 1.8%, and HIV, 0.3%. Are needle stick injuries common in dentistry? Studies on the workers' compensation claims in Washington State during a seven-year period were conducted. About 20% of total claims accepted by the state fund needle stick injury claims were by dental professionals. Who gets injured the most? Dental assistants, 75%, dental hygienists, 18%, and dentists, 7%. Who are these dental assistants? Most are women of childbearing age, a median age of 30. There are numerous studies reporting needle stick injuries among dentists, but studies on needle stick injuries among the dental assistants are non-existent. Of the 894 dental professionals with needle stick injuries, there was evidence of hepatitis B in six people hepatitis C in 30 people, HIV in 3 people, and both hepatitis B and hepatitis C in 2 people. The CDC estimated that the direct costs associated with initial follow-up and treatment of healthcare workers who have sustained a needle stick injury range from $500 to $3,000, depending on the type of treatments provided. Who pays for the medical costs after needle stick injuries? The employers. But who pays for the psychological and emotional trauma? The state of Washington's population is 2.2% of the U.S., and 894 needle stick injuries translate into at least 40,500 legitimate needle stick injuries among dental professionals in the U.S. Needle stick injuries are underreported. Needle stick injury claims are increasing. Most injuries were due to syringe needles. Dental assistants, 86%. Dental hygienists, 91%. Dentists, 82%. The current dental syringe and needle system is the main cause of the needle stick injuries in dentistry. The current dental syringe and needle system was invented in the 1960s. To remove the needle, recapping and unscrewing is necessary. The new Leject 2 system eliminates the recapping and unscrewing stages. How to reduce needle stick injuries in dentistry. Keep the work area clean and safe. Eliminate the chances of the needle stick injury. Discard the used needles immediately after injections, without recapping. The OSHA and CDC banned recapping and one-handed scoop technique in medicine and nursing. Dispose the needle without recapping or use safety needles. What do OSHA and CDC recommend to dispose needles in dentistry? One-handed scoop technique to recap the needles. What is the one-handed scoop technique? Place the needle cap on the table. Use one hand to place the needle through the cap. Push the needle cap against the wall until the needle is secured in the cap. So, what is the problem with the one-handed scoop technique? It is against our human nature. It is natural to do it faster and more precise with the two hands than one-handed scoop technique. If the rule is against human nature, then that rule is more likely to be ignored, like speed limits. Would inexperienced dental assistants always use the one-handed scoop technique during the busy periods? Some dentists use recapping devices to prevent needle stick injuries. What are these recapping devices? These recapping devices hold the needle caps so that the operator can recap the used needles. Then, what is the problem associated with recapping devices? When recapping devices are missing and cannot be found, then these operators are at greater risks. 
some bent needles cannot be recapped. Some dentists bend needles to inject at the inaccessible areas. If the needle is bent more than 40 degrees, then the needle cannot be recapped properly, which makes unscrewing very difficult. How does the market respond to the Leject 2 system? Most dental assistants and hygienists love it. Some dentists are neutral and or don't care. Those who appreciate the Leject 2 system have experienced or witnessed the actual or near-miss needle stick injuries, are acutely aware of danger every day. Strong critics of the Leject 2 system are some older male dentists who have not experienced needle stick injuries. If people don't believe, then they will resist changes in their habits and fight to maintain the status quo. The U.S. Congress passed the Needle Stick Safety and Prevention Act in 2000 to protect healthcare workers from needle stick injuries. This law requires employers to consider and complement new safety devices periodically. This law also requires employers to solicit and gather inputs for selection of new safety devices from the employees who actually handle the hazardous devices. Any needle stick injury is devastating. Let us protect ourselves and others by keeping the work area safe. Recapping should be banned in dentistry. For more information, please visit our website at www.leject.com.